Praise the Lord, everyone. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am Minister West, the host of One Crying Out in the Wilderness Gospel News Station. I come to you live this morning at 921. AM right here in the nation's capital of Washington DC. I'm glad to be here today. I am excited to be able to come as one that has arrived or conquered or have finished this course because the course is still going. The race is still being ran and the rapture has not taken place. There is room for those who have fallen to get up, for those who have failed to succeed, for those who are weak to get strong, and for those who have been misdirected to get in the right direction. Basically, we have room for forgiveness and repentance while yet there is time. My friend, I want to say something to you today. Um, my vacation is over, thank God. Um, I'm back. And now I have more time to think and focus and look at uh, the Word of God and the things of God a little more deeply. <clears throat> I, I thank God for what I've seen since I've been overseas. Let me just explain to you. Um, while I was overseas, I had the opportunity to experience a lamb sacrifice. All these years I'm living, I've never seen in person a lamb sacrifice. There was an event I attended, and in this event, there was a large multitude of people who gathered, children and adults, and much music was being played. There were uh, the, sac uh, the uh, there was a large knife present, and I was doing the video. While doing that, I saw. I paid attention more after I looked at the eyes of people, the expressions, and the awaiting for the lamb slain. The lamb I paid more attention to after that. I've viewed around, and when I looked at how they held the lamb, uh, the head first toward the man and he held the, the chin of the lamb in the air. I saw, I saw the uh, expression of the lamb. The lamb, it looked like it just knew that it was its last time here in the earth. I saw the expression. It, it showed great expression. It was, it was, it closed its eyes tight and it was just as humble but closed eyes tight and I saw the bottom lip and the chin chattering hard like it was cold and it, and it looked like it cried. I felt, I felt a mess. of the lamb slain for us. And it did something to me, all the way down to when the lamb was sacrificed. You know, the message this evening, or this morning rather, let's go back 
to standards. Go back to standards. I was told by the power of God, uh, even myself, I have to always use me as an example, that we get away from standards. We, we, we tend as human beings to do just what Jonah did, go in his own direction, the Balaam and the Balak, going in a direction you should not even though the angel of the Lord is standing there with a fiery drawn sword we tend to go our own way we tend to smoke the rock when God told us to speak to the rock we we, we tend to get complacent rather than content See, being content in the word, being content in God, being content uh, in the, the standards of God, being content uh, in the way of God is not a problem. It's scriptorial. It's, in fact, if you look at it, it'll tell you to be content in that. The problem is when we get sidetracked, we get outside of the standards of God. I better read the scripture. So let me just read one real quick and I'm going to move into the message. Uh, John, the 14th chapter in the 6th verse, says, Jesus said unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, cometh unto the Father but by me, the me. Christ, the Jesus, the way is the standard way. And sometimes we, and I have many scriptures I can I can read on standards, commandments, the way. But this is enough here for me to go deeply into this message this morning to show you that we've gotten away from standards. While I was on the plane, I was uh spoken to in my mind by the spirit how we've gotten outside of what is standard and some people rather fight religion fighting who's right who's wrong uh, uh, what church what mosque what what cathedral what hall or center or uh, storefront we they rather fight who's not doing this who's not doing that rather than maintaining your course and what is standard there's so much now even on facebook there's people who follow uh, this thing that facebook has that tell you how you're going to look when you get 60 or 70 or 80 uh show you how much money you're going to have and it's it, and and, and p children of god has turned away from the standard and have listened to this this have told you that you're going to be rich, that you're going to have a large house and have a car. That's the same thing as you go around down to the storefront or to the house front places that, that read your palm. You have turned away from the standard and have gotten so to the point where you've gotten forward and distant from God right, while yet speaking about God, while singing, while preaching, while attending ministry have gotten away from standard and have listened to the things that so beset us thinking that it's okay the scripture tells us some trust in horses and some trust in chariots but we who are the people of God shall trust in the things in the way of God in the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous runneth there in two and is saved. This is the standard of God. Standards of God. So let's read. Let's let's find out what is standard this morning. God dealt with me on this. And he said, go back to standards. Standards is a set.
as that which work without fail. Let me say it again. Standard is a set and established way set by authority as that which work without fail. The standard way of God it work in every part of your life, in your 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 marital relationship, in your your relationship between father and mother uh, and children, the relationship uh, at your job, the relationship in ministry, the relationship you have in your companies, the the way that you build your company, the way that 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 you 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 you, you conduct life. The of God it work without fail the reason why we fail is because we omit it to do what is standard the way the why we feel sometimes uh, locked away and loose and messed up and confused and and and, and our minds is, is discombobulated because if you look at it and you examine oneself you will find that you have omitted to 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 involve yourself or to 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 move and to direct yourself in the way of standard. Standard is very important for us, for we the just shall live by faith, which is the standard. The faith is in God. The standard is in God. That faith is that which we live by. When we start to do what the world is doing, seeking to be rich, when the scripture told us that they that will be rich, they do err. And we now is looking for riches. In fact, it's preached over the pulpit. So I understand why. But, 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 but what you need to do is even when you hear just know that it is important for you to know that God knows what you have need of before you ask him. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But put God first. Seek his standard way, standardized way and method first, and then you will see what God will do for you. But yet, don't you seek the things before seeking God. Don't let no preacher, nobody preach to you things before God, because it is the standard that's going to get you into that way which work and do not fail. Or oh, if I had time to speak more. On standard. The way we act and speak and carry ourselves, carrying grudges, hearing the world before we hear God letting the world lead us. How do we let the world lead us? Just like I just said, just an example of the Facebook thing. We let the world lead us. So to the point where we picked up all the slang of the world and have forgotten the slang and the speech of what is standard. We have gotten to the point where we dress any kind of way in the pulpit because one man said it is okay. We have, we have done everything that's against God's will. We done brought sports into the church. We brought acting into the church the church we brought everything into ministry into that place that's supposed to be sacred and standardized for us to hear to to to, to receive from God to let the Shekinah glory that that, that that that's supposed to fill the place and supposed to endow us with the spirit of God so that we won't have we will have less sicknesses we will have less of those who have this mental illness we will have less of those who have low self-esteem we will have less uh, activity of those who are going to commit suicide because the suicidal spirits have entered into the ministry into the pulpits so that the spirit of God is not there so now everything that is preached now affects the people more than affect the people in a spiritual way go back to standards crying out to God telling God to fix it for me when God have already 
fixed it. It's you that broken it with your mindset. Let this mind be in you. That that same mind that was in Christ. Let that mind be in you. The mind of standard. The mind of righteousness. The mind of truth. I'm telling you now from experience. That I failed many times. Because I omitted to go according to standard. And the building up of going to commit things is that we know that we're going to commit them. So we don't read, we don't pray, we don't fast, we don't want to hear it. We saw we go through Facebook and go through Instagram and go through all these different TikToks and all this stuff and see stuff that's not godly, that's not standardized, and yet we omit and we see a preacher preach, we turn past him and go straight to the thing that we set us. That's the thing that I'm trying to tell you here. God is saying, go back to standard. Standard is when we see a thing coming, we do like Job did. Job is stupid. Evil mean that when he saw it coming, he overlooked it and looked at the things of God. That's the thing that got us where we're supposed to be. That's the thing that got us to them levels in Christ. And now we have stepped down. We have gone back to hate. We have gone back to conducting what we think or what we call godly business, worldly business. We have Mimic the world. We have forgotten what the blood. What the blood stands for. We have forgotten what and why there was an atonement. We forgot why the lamb was sacrificed. We forgot what it is to have faith. We forgot the standard. We closed the book of the standards. And I want to tell you this on my job. We. We have a standard. And the standards, there is ways to install or to build all the way down to the smallest of a nail. There has to be a part of the standard. And if not, then that which was built is built incorrectly. Though it might look good after everything is backfilled, you see the sidewalk and the roadway repaved. When the people come behind us uh, to do their job, because the job that was done before is not done to standard, it creates an ongoing process and a problem where nobody can complete their assignment because the first standard assignment, the basis and the foundation of the standard was not carried out. So it creates problems along the way. Now somebody had to come back and redig up all that which was done as a waste of time and energy, a waste of skillmanship. And has to be redone because of the standard was neglected. Good God Almighty. And so it is with the spirit. And there is the us that is standing in the way. That's not doing things according to standard. And thinking that because we found out how to hoop. Because we found out how that preaching it, 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 it enticed people. We found out that now that's the way. But that's not the way. The way is that you do it according to that which is written in the scripture. Standards. We now have got to the, the point where our family and people that cater to us is the people we love. And all those who are not, we hate or despise or distance ourselves from. When the scripture says otherwise, what have you done that you love those who love you? You have done nothing. The love is not challenged until you love those who don't love you. Uh, your, 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 your standards has been blotted out. You have taken a black marker of your own wheel and way. That wheel and way is representing your black marker and you have marked out the standards of God and placed your own stuff. 
When a child of God is never supposed to go his own way, even though he's supposed to keep his will, but his will should be in the will of God. That's why Jesus said at the precipice of death where he knew he was going to be sacrificed, he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done in me, Lord. I really don't want to go. My body don't want to receive this pain. I saw what was in the cup. I saw the people who I know was not going to love me. The people I saw was going to keep on going their way even after I'm slain. I know it. I know it. I know there's going to be false prophets that are going to rise. I know there's going to be people who are going to misconstrue everything that I came to do in the earth for mankind. How I love them first before they love me. I know it. I see it in the cup. But yet I'm going to die for the people that hate me. I'm going to die for those who shall love me because I know the ways that God want me to go. I know the assignment Assignment. The assignment is to maintain the standards. Yet we have gotten away. And so, the Spirit of God is prompting me to tell you this. Me first. And all others who are listening. Go back to standards. When you go back to standards, just know there are going to be some folk that hate you. But Jesus said uh, that the world hated him first. So, 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 and, 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 and that's an 18th verse of, of uh, John, the 15th chapter, the next chapter over. It said, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. There's going to be some folk that's going to hate you. See, as long as you have that entourage, the people that's pushing you to keep on going. Know why? Because you ain't preaching no truth. When you start preaching the truth, for real, it's going to be some people going to hate you, despise you. But the truth is what we all need in order to be within standard. It's the truth that makes a man free. The truth shall make a man free, make you free. The truth shall make you free. It's the I'm not talking about no pending light. I'm not talking about you and the defendant and the and the and the plaintiff down at some Supreme Court. I'm talking about the truth of God. That's the truth. I'm not talking about what you went through is your truth. That's not, that your truth is not the truth. My truth of my past is not my truth. I'm talking about the truth of God is the truth. Jesus said, I am, I am, not your truth of your life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the way. I am the light. So, so, so what I'm telling you is your truth is not the truth. The truth is here. This is the truth that we need to turn to. This is that which I need in order to be within standard. And I know when I've gotten outside of this, I failed. I've erred. You end up coming back saying, Lord, forgive me. I repent. Now, I'm not telling you nothing wrong with repentance. But what about the standard? What about after that, that we turn to the standard? So here's what the Spirit of God is telling me. Get back into your reading. Get back into your prayer. Because I told you that man should always pray and not faint. Always pray and not faint. Get back into rebuking that spirit. The other day I woke up and, and I was early in the morning. I was in the, in, in the bed. And I, I got up. And I begin to rebuke everything that was not godly. I rebuke you, demon of poverty. I rebuke you. I rebuke you, you mind. You, 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 demon of, of of separating spouse. I rebuke you. I rebuked every devil that I can think of. Sickness, every type of sickness. I rebuked it. We gotten away from rebuking that devil. We let him run all over us. Don't say nothing. I rebuke you, you demon of weakness, spiritual weakness, spiritual infidelity. Spiritual infidelity means that you don't make no relationship with God. You neglect 
them, and then on Sunday, hey, hallelujah. So when the problem comes, oh no, God, I'm, God got my back. But what about you having God in you? What about the standards? We've done it. And God is saying, get back to your fasting. Start now. And so this week, I'm going on a fast. I'm going on a three-day fast representing the three days that our Christ rose up from the grave. And those three days will be without food or drink from 3 in the morning till 3 p.m. I'm doing it for me because I'm going back to standards. The thing that works without fail, which was established by our authority, that show us how you can make it. The reason why we're not making it and I'm telling you, when you sit down, see, God ain't never wrong. So you can sit there and think all night long, all week long, all month long, all year long. And I bet you, it, and I'm not a better, but it, I will guarantee you that after that you have sat down and examined oneself, you will find out that most of the things that you've gone into that is dark and wrong and messed up is because of your failure to go back to standard. Let us return back to standard. Hear ye word of the Lord. Repent. Let us all repent. For I have repented many times. And I'm going to keep on repenting as long as this body try to do what is not godly. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm only ashamed that if I sit down in my mess and don't get up. That's what I will be ashamed of. I'll be ashamed if I don't go back to standard. And I mentioned Jonah. I mentioned the 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 the, the, the uh, Balaam and Balaf, uh, 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 Balak. I, I mentioned these people. I mentioned certain people in the scriptures that have gone contrary, but they turned around. It's the prodigal son. He turned around. He went back to standard. He went back. When you go back to God, you go back to the things of God. You've gone back to standard. You've gone back to the belief status the belief foundation the very very thing shall work without fail the standard of god god bless you and may heaven smile upon you let us go back to standard god bless you